Here's a quick one for you. List the Ten Commandments. You remember the stone tablets. There were two sets, after all. Now, if you're like me, the first thing you think of is, Thou shalt not. And then I try to remember them one by one, and I usually stop after about five. It's exhausting and depressing, mostly because I haven't been perfect all my life and failed quite a few. What if we turned all that on its head? What if we took those commandments and turned them into positives? There's a secret here. Someone we know did exactly that about 2,000 years ago. Come and join us as we try to explore what all those thou shalt nots have to do with loving your neighbor, living in community, and dealing with systemic racism and the destruction of our planet. Today we're going to be uh, doing communion together. So I encourage you to gather a cup of juice or water and uh, a little loaf of bread maybe. Anything will really work. It could be a cracker, a piece of toast. And then let us share communion together today. Let us come together in this call and response prayer. In the days of Noah, God placed a rainbow in the sky as the sign of a covenant of God's love for all the earth. In the colors of the rainbow, we see the sign of God's grace for all creation. In the days of Moses, the words of God were written on tablets of stone as a sign of a covenant between God and all of God's people. In the tablets of stone, we see the sign of God's hope for each to live in peace with God and neighbor. In the days of the prophet, God promised to place a new covenant in our hearts. As members of the living body of Christ, we see the sign of God's promise among us. Amen.
From Psalm 19, The Voice The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display His craftsmanship. Day after day they continue to speak. Night after night they make Him known. They speak without a sound or a word. Their voice is never heard. Yet their message has gone out through the earth and their words to all the world. God has made a home in the heavens for the sun. It bursts forth like a radiant bridegroom after his wedding. It rejoices like a great athlete eager to run the race. The sun rises at one end of the heavens and follows its courses to the other end. Nothing can hide from its heat. The instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commandments of the Lord are clear, giving insight for the living. Reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting forever. The laws of the Lord are true. Each one is fair. They are more desirable than gold, even the finest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even honey dripping from the comb. They are a warning to your servant, a great reward for those who obey them. How can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. Keep your servant from deliberate sin. Don't let them control me. Then I will be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Now let us come together in a prayer of confession and assurance. God gave us the covenant of the law to guide us and help us live with our neighbors in love. When we break God's law, we leave our neighbors hurt and bruised. God's law is a gift to us, showing us how to keep our part of the covenant. Even through old pain and wounds, may we embrace the new life that Christ can bring. If you'd like to take this moment for a silent prayer to pray to God what's in your heart. Now here are these words of assurance. May the God of the law guide us in living lives to keep the covenant of love. May Christ's forgiveness grant us new life even when we break God's law. May the Holy Spirit of conviction lead us to confession and renewal. May we respond in love to the God of covenant and change. Amen. today is from Exodus 20, 1 through 17, taken from the message. God spoke all these words. I am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of a life of slavery. No other gods, only me. 
no carved gods of any size, shape, or form of anything whatever, whether of things that fly or walk or swim. Don't bow down to them and don't serve them, because I am God, your God, and I am a most jealous God, punishing the children of any of the sins of their parents pass on to them, to the third and, yes, even the fourth generation of those who hate me. But I am unswervingly loyal to the thousands who love me and keep my commandments. No using the name of God, your God, in curses or silly banter, God won't put up with the irreverent use of his name. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Work six days and do anything you need to do. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to God, your God. Don't do any work. Not you, not your son, nor your daughter, nor your servant, nor your maid, nor your animals, not even the foreign guests visiting in your town. For in six days God made heaven, earth, and sea, and everything in them. He rested on the seventh day. Therefore God blessed the Sabbath day. He set it apart as a holy day. Honor your father and mother so that you'll live a long time in the land that God, your God, is giving you. No murder, no adultery, no stealing, no lies about your neighbor, no lusting after your neighbor's house or wife or servant or maid or ox or donkey. Don't set your heart on anything that is your neighbor's. This is the word of God. The book of Exodus is one we share with the Jewish faith communities. It is part of the five books of the Torah. Today we are laser focused on Exodus 20, when God first gave Moses the Ten Commandments. What is interesting is that Exodus 21 through 31, the next long ten chapters, that these, after these ten rules are expanded upon and explained in great detail and includes a lot more of these orders from above, which details everything from treating foreigners in your own land, from Exodus 22:21, where it says, you shall not wrong or oppress a resident alien, for you were aliens in the land of Egypt, or my favorite one of late, Exodus 23, 1 through 3, you shall not spread a false report, you shall not join hands with the wicked to act as a malicious witness. You shall not follow a majority in wrongdoing. When you bear witness in a lawsuit, you shall not side with the majority so as to pervert justice, nor shall you be partial to the poor in a lawsuit. Ah, <laughs> if the politicians would only read the Bible instead of just holding it up like a trophy. If your memory of the Ten Commandments is anything like mine, it was a much shortened version, probably influenced by the movie of the same title, The Ten Commandments. In that movie, it went like this. Moses goes up to the mountain and speaks with God. He gets the tablets. He comes down the mountain, only to find that the people of Israel have grown tired of waiting for Moses and God to show up and build an idol a golden bull representing Baal. Moses gets upset, breaks the tablets, and goes back up the mountain, and later comes down. End of scenes. Yada, 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 yada. <laughs> it makes for a good movie, but it makes for a very shallow faith. And to this, the difference between what Christ, who was Jewish, said, love God and love your neighbor, and well, who likes to be told what they cannot do anyway? That seems to be especially true here in the U.S. We hate it when anyone tells us what we can or cannot do and run the personal freedoms up of our flagpole instead, instead of compassion, instead of care, instead of understanding. Well, that list just keeps going, do, doesn't it? Just look at the silly resistance to wearing a mask, even though it follows Jesus' second commandment, love thy neighbor. It doesn't say, love thy neighbor as long as it doesn't infringe on your personal liberties, does it? Oh, 
don't get me started. No, I, I want to go back to Exodus 20, though, and perhaps examine this in a different way and focus on the first statement, which in some interpretations is part of the actual first commandment, and in others, it's like the eleventh commandment. Here it is from the message. God spoke all these words. I am God, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of a life of slavery. And then for those who like the King James Version, and God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Okay, did you hear it? Was there a command in there? Was there anything like all those thou shalt nots? No, those follows in a series of statements about how God wants and hopes that you and I will live. It is about being faithful to God. How many times growing up do you recall having a parent or guardian tell you something like, I am your parent, I love you, I protect you, I feed and clothe you, I keep harm away from you. You know, we're fortunate, Julie and I, have had a chance to share in our granddaughter. We've been watching our daughter Sarah and her husband Cameron as they explore parenting for the first time with our beautiful granddaughter Karina. Everything that they do is about encouraging, teaching, helping, and celebrating. I saw them tear up when Karina rolled onto her tummy for the first time. There wasn't a single thou shalt not to be found in the house. I never even heard the word no. Sheltering, loving, caring. These are the words of a parent. These are the way that we parent our children. How many times when you are hurt or scared or lonely did your parents or guardians come to you? Maybe, maybe it wasn't parent, your parents. Maybe it was a friend or someone who cared for you. You know, in these ancient texts, God is speaking to all the people there. I am God, your God. I belong to you as much as you belong to me. I heard your cries and took you away from the nightmare you were living. I came to your side in the time of darkness and rescued you from harm. I am your God. I think that's how a parent acts. As Karina grows, I'm sure, from my own experience, that Sarah and Cameron will grow with her and change. But I'm equally certain that their love for her will not change, except to grow. If you're at all like me, there were times when our parents or guardians said things to prevent us from being hurt. Don't run into the street without looking. Eat your green vegetables. Go to bed. Now. <laughs> You're driving too fast. Slow down. These are the thou shall nots of our lives, aren't they? There were no stone tablets, yet most of us remembered these as helpful and not harmful. If you're a parent or guardian or grandparent, you know the impact of your words and you know the impact will change over time. Parenting changes over time as well, from the thou shalt not to the let me show you how, from stop doing that to I see in you such a beautiful person, someone who is so much better than that. For me, the introduction to Exodus 20 sets the stage for us to reimagine these passages anew. We can see them as something more like what we would expect from a parent. God starts out with us, with the Israelites as well, as children, reminding us of God's unending love. What if we took these ancient words and looked at them as a parent would? Can we reimagine them in this way? What if we took them as Sarah and Cameron might with Karina? Let's give it a try. So instead of, no other gods before me, we say, you don't need anyone but me. I'll be here 
I'll be here with you always, protecting you as I promised. So instead of you shall not make for yourself an idol, well, when you are worried or hurting, turn to God. If you put all those material things in the world first instead, I can assure you, you will end up last. How about, you shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God. Hmm. How about when you get upset, you know, cursing someone, anyone, it isn't going to help. In fact, if someone hears it, they will also get upset. Instead, take a breath, go someplace of beauty, and wait for God to enter your heart and calm you. You won't even need to curse. One of my favorites, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Look, even God had to take a break from the work of building the world. God's telling us, take time off to be with God, to pray, to read scripture, to think about who you are in this world. How about honor your father and your mother? Hmm. There have been millions of people before you came into existence. So many of them are willing to help you, but they won't if you treat them poorly. Instead, turn to the older people around you that you respect and be with them. Listen to them. Help them. Some of them may have helped raise you, and now you can help them by respecting them. Here's a short one. You shall not murder. <laughs> you remember that rule about loving your neighbor? Well, if you hurt them, and I mean in any way, how is that loving them? This is a tough one. Try going over this with your children. You shall not commit adultery. Look, this is really about loving your neighbor, but not about that kind of love, because someone is going to get hurt, including you. How about you shall not steal? So, who are you stealing from? Who are you taking things from? Big hint, if it's not yours, then it begins with the letter N, as in neighbor. If you steal something, then someone gets hurt. If you need something, ask or evaluate why you need it. Ask your neighbor for help instead. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Well, when you tell a lie, you're going to hurt someone, including yourself. Even if you get away with the lie, you will know. And that's a crazy, crazy place to be. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet, 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 covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. This is my personal favorite, mostly because it ends with or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. If someone has something you really, really want, I mean, you want it so bad that it keeps you up at night, then you know what you've done you've replaced your love for God with that object. You can go back to the rule about that, about idols. I think you'll find help there. The God of the Old Testament was a pretty cantankerous God. Or, or was it the people who recorded all these words, who made it in such a way to make sense to the people of the time? That's the weird thing about the Bible that people often forget. It is a living document. There are so few words in it that you or I can read today that are actually what was written thousands of years ago that we absolutely have to read it in our current context and our present understanding. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, knew that the scripture belonged to us and is read by us and is interpreted by each of us as individuals. If you read the scripture as it is, a literal interpretation, then think of what you could get away with nowadays and not break any commandments. I mean, the scripture says, you shall not do any work on the Sabbath. 
your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. So, does that mean that you can have your employees do the work for you? They aren't slaves or servants, after all. Can you have a robot do the work instead? You see, it isn't about the work. It is about the Sabbath, the time you need to reflect, pray, read scripture, discuss and worship to keep you grounded. The whole thou shalt not structure and the chapters after it are not about specific items as they were back then. You aren't building a temple and need to know where to put the curtains, are you? No, they're about how to get closer to God, how to let the Holy Spirit work in you so that you and I can build God's kingdom on earth. It's about being a good parent and praising our children, not standing over them with a stick. God, our God, you know, the one Exodus 20 starts out with, I am God, your God, that one, the one who loves you and wants you to live as full and meaningful a life as possible, is that parental God, guiding, not hurting filling our lives through God's love and grace. The one that sent Jesus just to be closer to us and help us on our life's journey. I encourage you to read Exodus 20 and look at each of those rules through the eyes of love that God has given you. I encourage you to see them more than some stone tablets from long ago that have long since lost their meaning. I know God will celebrate with you if you do. Amen. I invite you to gather here together wherever you are and as safely as you can. When you see the words on the screen as people, please join me in reciting them. The peace and presence of the Lord be with you, so we lift up our hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, because it is the right thing to do, not only now, but always, day after day after day. Day after day after day. We thank you, Creator God, that you made us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away, our love failing and our bodies diseased, you reached out to us again and again, providing healing, wholeness, and a new life. When the flood came, you provided an ark. When the plagues came, you provided safety. When evening came, you provided a pillar of fire. When exile came, you provided a new song. Day after day after day, your love remained steadfast. Day after day after day. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of your God, our God. Blessed is your son who came to preach the good news to the poor, release the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind freed the oppressed, and announced that the time had come that we belong to your body. We belong to your body. May the Spirit use us to heal and reconcile in Jesus' name. We will heal and reconcile in Jesus' name. And now, Holy Spirit, make us one in Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Amen. Let us join together in this prayer a version of the Lord's Prayer from the Aldersgate Youth, written by Addie Parker. Let us pray. Our Father, who is in heaven, <coughs> holy is your name. Help us do your will here on earth as it is in heaven. Give us what we need each day and let us be grateful. Forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and guide us away from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
This bread reminds us that any life, no matter how broken or sick or distorted it may become, can be made whole again. The cup reminds us that any life, no matter how empty or lonely or isolated, may become and be filled again. These are the gifts of God for the family of God. Thanks be to God. I now invite you to prayerfully partake in Holy Communion by whatever means you have. Let us pray. Day after day, you give yourself to us. In two or three gathered in your name, in connections across the miles, and in the bread and wine. As we go from this gathering around your table, may we feel restored to your body, companioned by your people, and sustained by the power of your spirit as we witness to your healing and reconciling work. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. Uh, these days are full of challenges and also possibilities. Our Lenten Bible study is from God, Bob Goff's book, Everybody Always. It's about learning to love everyone. This past week, we explored the resistance we get when we tell someone how to behave, how to be something else. And Bob suggests instead, we tell them, who we see they are. People are frustrated about having to give up so much for fighting the pandemic. Thou shalt not hasn't worked too well. What if we flip that to, I see you as someone who cares deeply for your neighbor and will keep on doing whatever is necessary to save their lives. Go this week then and live the commandments. Don't bother with memorizing them live them. You're going to make a mistake now and then. God knows that. That's why Jesus came to understand that we are in fact just children. Children of God. Imperfect. And still forgiven. Amen. <laughs>